This video is brought to you by Aerolo. I'm on my way now. Today we are hungry and we think we've come to the right place to do some eating. We're in the capital today in Antigua, St. John's. Yeah, the focus I think is going to be on Antiguan, is that the right word? And Caribbean food. But we might take some curveballs here and there, but that's going to be the focus. We have heard so many great things about the food in this country. And honestly, whenever we have Caribbean food, we kind of forget just how good it is. And over the last few days, you know, we've been here, we've been exploring a little bit. We do already have a video from here. And we've kind of been avoiding eating the local foods so that today we could really try it out for the first time. We're already on the hunt here for uh, some food. Now, if you guys are new around here, it's Trevor. Anna's right back there. Make sure to hit subscribe and the like button if you're hungry today. If you're not new, thanks for coming back once again now. Let's eat. Our first stop today is called Roti King, and this place must be popular because there's a line here just as it's opening. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys before you even get here, if you're coming to this city, you have got to be aggressive when you're ordering. So, there was sort of a line. I thought it was my turn, and then people would come behind us, and the girl would just say, who's next? And everyone would just say, hamburger, stew. <laughs> so, be aggressive when you're ordering, but we got some delicious food coming. So, roti is one of the main dishes you're gonna find in various Caribbean islands, not just here on Antigua. But, I, I, it's funny, we've had it a lot of times on the other side of the world. I think it originates in India, but we've had it in Indonesia and Singapore, all over the place. And I kind of wondered, like, how did it end up here as one of the main dishes in the Caribbean? So, I looked it up. Apparently in the 19th century, a lot of Indian workers came over in the uh, sugar plantations and they brought their food with them. So curry, roti became a big Caribbean dish. All right, let's uh, cut right into this guy and see what, we're, see what we're working with. I'm not sure what the proper way to eat this is, but I don't know how you could possibly eat, with, eat it with your hands, so I'm definitely using a fork and a knife. Hopefully that's the appropriate way to do it. If it is supposed to be with your hands, Look at that, you can see the roti, which is essentially a very, very thin flatbread on the outside. And then on the inside, ooh, you can smell that curry. I wish you guys could smell this, it smells amazing. Chicken, I think you see some potatoes in there. It honestly smells amazing. Let's see if it is amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, this is absolutely delicious. I love the roti itself. It's nice and soft and light and ever so slightly flaky, but I love just how thin it is. It's not overly heavy because the ingredients themselves are really where it comes into play. That curry is incredible. A little tiny bit of spice to it, but nothing overwhelming, but just really, really good flavor. There is some hot sauce on the side, so maybe we'll try that with it as well. Moving right along to this dish, we got some macaroni pie, which is very popular here. Stewed chicken, rice and beans, and a salad. Now, macaroni pie is hugely popular on this island. It's on all the lists of foods to try. It's like a must try thing. So really, it kind of looks like mac and cheese. If you're from our part of the world, you're gonna say mac and cheese, but you can see kind of some little burnt marks and gooey cheese on the top. And then of course the, the noodle itself. Now, usually it's served cold. I'm not sure if this one is, but let's give it a try. Oh. Well, this is just pure perfection. Dare I even call it heavenly cheese. You guys, noodles are perfect, but the cheese itself, what's going on in here? We, we had high expectations of this specifically coming in here, and it is living up to the hype. First of all, the cheese is just really rich. It's really creamy, but the little crispy parts on the top make it because you get the contrast. You get the kind of the hard little bits of cheese and the soft bits of cheese. Mm. Oh, if you're gumming here, it's worth just getting this alone. Oh my goodness. Let's try out this uh, stewed chicken. This is just completely falling off the bone. So definitely uh, some secrets going on in here. They must cook this low and slow. So let's try this one as well. Oh my, does it ever smell good. Oh, that's it. Chicken, mac and cheese. Mm. Perfection. I'll try out the rice and beans here next. Now, rice and beans, of course, are a huge staple here in the Caribbean. I think almost every country, every island in the Caribbean goes to this when they're really hungry. I mean, rice and beans, it's usually not too expensive, but the thing is, down here in the Caribbean, they know how to do it. So let's see here if Antigua can do some rice and beans. Oh man, I love, I love rice and beans. I don't know what it is about hot weather. Like, I know rice and beans 
should be heavy, but there's something about it that just works when you're in weather like this. It's also the perfect companion to that mac and cheese, <laughs> the macaroni pie, and the chicken. Of course, we have the salad as well. This is a great start to the day. I feel like we're at a really local place. There's no other tourists around. And yeah, I think we're doing all right. I don't think this restaurant is going to be top today. We're just talking amongst ourselves here, saying this food is absolutely crazy. Great start to the day. The thing is, we're trying to pick a favorite. That's, can you pick a favorite here? Yeah, so I just tried the stew chicken, because Trevor obviously tried it on camera, and I didn't get to try it. Really nice sauce on it. It's a little bit sweet, not spicy at all. I'm gonna, again gonna go for that hot sauce. We haven't tried that yet. I'm gonna guess it's really, really spicy. But the roti is just incredible. This whole place is delicious, but roti is the winner for me. It's gonna be one of my favorite foods in a while. Listen to how loud it is in here. We got some school kids there. There's people behind us. I think if there's any mistake we made so far today is we ordered too much food because we have more food to eat. Before we keep eating delicious food, we just wanted to say a huge thanks to this week's sponsor, Arolo. We discovered Arolo about a year and a half ago when we were traveling to Europe and then Asia. And we'd heard of eSIMs before, but we didn't really understand what they were or how they work. Arolo is the world's first eSIM store that solves the pain of high roaming bills by giving you access to eSIMs, which are digital SIM cards. With eSIMs from Arolo, download and install a digital data pack from over 200 countries and regions to be connected anywhere in the world the second you land. Arolo is so easy to use, so before you travel, you just search on their app to see what they have available for the country you're going to. Sometimes they have local plans, but in other circumstances, if you're traveling to a lot of different places, they also have regional and global plans. Most of the time, they're data, but there are also plans that offer SMS and phone plans as well. So you just purchase the eSIM and install it. It literally takes a few minutes. Then when you land, you activate it and you're ready to go. Here's the best part. Most of the plans offer additional top-ups that make it even easier when you need more data. This has honestly solved so many hassles for us. For one, you don't need to worry about crazy roaming fees from your home country, and you get to keep your own phone number. But when you land in a new place, you already have data available, so you don't need to worry about like how much is it cost to get a taxi from the airport that you're landing at. You're not, don't need to worry about getting scammed because you can look stuff up. The amount of time it saves you in a day, you don't have to go around the new town or the new country trying to find a SIM card. It's all there, ready to go. It saves us so much time and it's one of the benefits of using Arolo. To use Arolo for yourself on your next travels, just head to the link in the description below to sign up and download the Arolo app. Use the code DELIGHTFUL3 to save $3 off your next eSIM purchase with Arolo. And a huge thanks to Arolo for sponsoring this video and supporting creators like us. Now, let's go eat. Well, on to the next place now. We're just coming across, uh, I'll say, a newer part of the town. We're close to the cruise ships, so that's why I think everything's a little more curated and like it's totally, cleaned up. It's like a line. There's like a road between you walk across, and all of a sudden you're in this pedestrian area. All this like high-end shops and like pretty colors. Totally, definitely made for the cruise ships. One of the things I don't like about filming food videos is that when you come across really good food, you want to eat it all. Like that roti, I could have eaten the entire thing, but then I wouldn't have room to eat everything else. So right now we figured we'd just take a little bit of a break and walk around, try to walk it off a little bit. You guys always ask us how we film these uh, food videos all in one go. Typically we film over multiple days. I don't think we're going to today because we're running out of time. So we need this walk to work it all off, like Anna said, so we can eat more food. But now you're probably seeing the cruise ships around here. We got two big ones in here today, and I don't know if there's more coming, do you? I don't know. When I looked yesterday, there were four ships apparently in yesterday, but I forgot to look for today. <laughs> so maybe it's just two. You also might be wondering how we got here, especially if you watched our last video. We were staying in the Jolly Harbor area. We did not take a taxi. We actually tried the public transit. It was really, really easy. It was only one USD per person. It took maybe 20, 25 minutes. It's quite busy, but not stuffed. It was basically Basically like a van with I don't know probably yeah. like 12 seats or something. I mean, if people are watching from the DR, it's like a guagua. You just hop yeah. in, pay like a dollar, and yeah. then you get here. It, it was, was fun actually, and it easy. Was it. it was easy, but yeah, look at these ships and the color of the water, though, huh? <laughs> I can't get over the color of the water, especially like in a port. We're not even on a beach right now, so we've been on a hunt for some shawarma. We came across this local place. There are a lot of people here. We actually got it to go because there was very loud music, a lot of people around, not many tables. We've come over to a cute little spot to try it. Shawarma is probably not the first thing that comes to mind when you're thinking of things that we might be eating today in Antica, but I read lots and lots of lists of things you gotta eat here, and shawarma, oddly enough, was always, always on the list. 
I think it's because there were a lot of Lebanese and Syrian immigrants that came here in the past, and now there's just a whole lot of shawarma shops. Funny enough, I have not eaten that much shawarma in my life, even though I love Mediterranean food. I've eaten a ton of gyros when we've been in Greece. We spent a lot of time in Greece. I've had some like doner, doners in Halifax, which is where we're from. It's kind of a local food, and also like doner kebabs in Turkey. But this, I've only had, really had it a couple times. I don't know why, because it's on a lot, it's on menus all over the world. It's also kind of fun because it's this street food. Like we couldn't get a seat. We're just sitting on a random bench here. This beautiful little area. Mm -hmm. What is the verdict on that guy? Mm. I was slightly concerned when we took it to leave that we were, it wasn't gonna be saucy enough because they had all these sauces on the sides and of course we didn't get to do it because it was all wrapped up, but it's got a really, really good sauce already on it. We're not missing anything. It's nice and tangy, a little bit sweet, a little bit salty. Um, I don't normally love tomatoes on like a sandwichy type thing or a wrap, but I find it goes really, really well here. It just adds a little bit extra to it and a little crunch from the lettuce. The chicken itself, super tender, super flavorful, really, really good. Well, Anna completely sold me on this little guy, so I'm gonna give it a try as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that absolutely hits the spot, and I think Anna described it perfectly, but one thing I will add to it is, it's kind of a similar food that we had with the roti, meaning you have this pita, it's all wrapped up, but my favorite thing about this, maybe this is my favorite thing so far about Antigua, is there's different kinds of food, and I love that a shawarma is up there with local food. It seems to be slightly multicultural here, I absolutely love that. Usually when that happens, you get a variety of food like this, so it's not just like jerk chicken and stewed chicken coming in, you get delicious, delicious shawarma like this. So this area that we're in right now, that's right next to the cruise port, is beyond cute. Like, where did this come from? It popped up I know, nowhere. we just kind of walked through a little archway and we discovered this place. I think someone referred to it as the market. I'm not sure if that's an official name, but there's like an you know, art gallery, yeah. lots of cute shops, restaurants. There's actually a restaurant called Cuties, very <laughs> aptly named. That's how we got the recommendation. We asked the local uh, where to try the shawarma. She pointed us to where we just went, and then we came down here to eat it. And this is what we found. This yeah. is one of our favorite things about when you're out exploring. We yeah, you didn't just know randomly come here. across cute stuff. So if you are in St. John's, this is right by the cruise port. You just kind of have to you have to look for it. You'll look, you'll find it. <laughs> you'll find it. So if you're coming through here off of a cruise ship, I know there's that main walkway we kind of went through, but definitely come in here. The shop seems a little bit more local, a little more local products, maybe less souvenirry junk stuff, might I say. I think you can find some actual like really good souvenirs in here. We also have these here. We got some phone booths. Haven't seen these in a while. No, we were actually in the UK recently and I don't even remember seeing them. Do they even still have them there anymore? But <laughs> kind of fun, kind of gimmicky. I know, look guys, there's a phone in here. Very curious if it works, but it looks like it's seen better days. We're now at a restaurant called Caribbean Taste over in English Harbor, which is quite a ways away from where we just were because it's a new day. Do you remember early in the video I said, we're gonna try to film everything today. Well, we had a little bit of a fail. The last play place in the city that we went to didn't have what we were looking for, so we're picking it up the next day. We're running out of days here, but luckily we have this day left. We ordered some more food to eat, and we cannot wait to try it. We have a big plate of food here, but really there are two things that we specifically came to get, and this is what we could not find yesterday. This on top being fungi, and right beside it is a dish called dukana. It does traditionally come with a fish, I think a salted cod, a salted fish. We're not big fish fans, especially salted, but they offered to make it with stewed chicken for us instead. I know we already had stewed chicken in this, so really it comes down to the sauce. This is gonna be all about the sauce. You said you can't have it without sauce, so they offered it with this. Looks really good, smells really good too. I'm gonna to start with this fungi, which is basically similar to polenta. It is made with cornmeal, also, I have my notes here on my phone. I'm gonna uh, just refer to for a second. It's made with okra water, and it could be seasoned with onions and peppers, and it kinda is like a mashed potato, or should have a consistency, much like that. And it does, but as I put my fork through that, it's quite dense. Yeah, anybody watching, well, at least from our part of the world, is gonna say that looks like a mashed potato. Yeah, just a little yellower. <laughs> So if we are gonna actually compare this to a mashed potato, I would say it's a little bit more dense, a little bit more chewy than that, and a little less fluffy. But it does, you can definitely taste that cornmeal taste, so different, different taste than a mashed potato. It's quite simple, simple, quite delicate, so I think it'll be a lot better with um, the sauce. And it makes sense that she was like, no, you have to have to have it with sauce. Well, Anna mentioned the sauce. I might as well go ahead and try it. It really has the uh, texture or consistency, I believe, of gravy. Oh yeah, mm. Oh, it's like I'm eating turkey dinner. 
back home. This is super, super comfort food. Mm. The gravy is like a little lighter than what I'm used to, or at least what I think when I have in Canada, say on Thanksgiving or something like that. It's a little bit tomatoey as well, but it really, really makes um, this dish sing. Like I like this a lot, and I love that the sauce is also covered in everything on the plate. All right, I'm gonna try this Dukana. Now, this does not look very appealing at all visually, but this guy is made of sweet potato, coconut, and pumpkin. So it's kind of like a tamale. Uh, it's wrapped in a banana leaf. Now I'm gonna just kind of soak this up in this uh, gravy that I like. But yeah, the color of this, it almost looks like, well, it doesn't look like you should eat it in a way, <laughs> if I'm being honest, but let's see what it's all about. Oh, wow, oh, not at all what I thought. Well, this is a whole lot sweeter than I expected. I don't know what I was thinking when I took a bite. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's extremely dense. So it's very chewy, not like crispy chewy. It's just like, it feels like you're gonna keep chewing uh, forever. But the thing is, the sweetness comes forward right away. So you can really taste that coconut. You can taste the other ingredients as well, but I'd almost say like it feels like it could, it could be a dessert. I mean, I wouldn't just have this with the coffee, but it really walks that fine line of like a savory uh, meal and a dessert meal at the same time, but it's really good. I still cannot believe the color of this thing though. Like it's just not a color that looks extremely appetizing, does it? I don't think so. Okay, I think I need to try this as well. And just to clarify just one thing that Trevor said, this was actually cooked in a banana leaf. It's now no longer, as you can see, wrapped in a banana leaf. It just cooked that way, the same way a tamale would be in, say, Mexico. It is super dense. Like, to cut through it, it takes a little bit, of, you need a little bit of a effort to get through it. Is chewing gonna be the same way? I'm very curious oh, what wow. you're gonna think about this. It's like a whole new taste. <laughs> Interesting. So I actually dip mine in the sauce before I try it and I think that's actually perfect because you get the sweetness from the dukana, uh, which also has cinnamon in it. I, I taste the cinnamon right away and I had to go back to my notes. There is in fact seasoned with cinnamon, but I love the combo of the sweetness of the sweet potato, the coconut, combined with the saltiness of the sauce. It's really good. Better than I expected after, I wasn't sure what to, uh, what to think after Trevor tried it, but I think it's the important thing with both of these dishes is to have sauce with it. Well, that's gonna do it for the food video here in Antigua. We had so much fun. Well, now going around the country eating all this food. First, we were just in the city, but here we are on the other side of the island. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, like the good variety of food that you can try here in Antigua, mainly eating local foods, but yeah. it was fun to try the shawarma in there as well. Throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really a lot of fun. If you guys have been here before, or if you're from the island watching, let us know where your favorite local places are mm -hmm. to eat, like typical food here in the country. Leave a comment below, because then others can see as well. But we highly recommend the places we went to today. Yeah, we really enjoyed them. <laughs> everything we had today. I don't think we had one bad thing, did we? No, I don't think yeah. so. And in hindsight, I'm kind of glad it went to the next day because we were pretty uh, stuffed yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yesterday, So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, if you're new around here, it's Trevor and a Delightful Travelers. Hit subscribe. We do have another video coming up. Can't wait to show you more of this island. But for now, it's time to maybe go to the beach. I mean, we're surrounded by these beaches, yeah, 365 of them. 365 <laughs> to choose from. How do you pick? But we're going to do it. We're going to go spend a little bit of time at the beach. All right, guys. That's it. <laughs> From Antigua, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.